Welcome back to Teach Me Homemade. Today we are working on another festival and fair foods. This recipe is another delicious funnel cake. This one is a red velvet with yummy cream cheese icing. These aren't in every fair and festival, but when you do find them, they are something special. So come on in, grab your paper and pencil, and let's get into what we need for this recipe. I'm going to start out with our dipping sauce. We're going to need cream cheese, granulated sugar, powdered sugar, heavy whipping cream, milk, and vanilla extract. For the funnel cakes, we're going to need all-purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, salt, milk, vanilla extract. We're going to need eggs, granulated sugar, red food coloring, oil for frying, and powdered sugar for sprinkling. Let's get started on the recipe. All right, now before I get started, the first thing I do is I get my pot ready and then I go ahead and I put in my oil. So I probably want in this pan, now you can use a skillet, I'm using a pot. I'm gonna pour about two to three inches of oil into my pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. And I'm gonna put it on medium because it takes a little bit to get up there close to 350. Now again, you can use this skillet. Another thing that I do to prep myself, I go ahead and get out my paper plates that I'm going to use. Now I'm not going to go straight from my pan to my paper plates. I'm going to use another pan when they come out that I've got ready. Now I have a little rack that I put in there. Now if you don't have one, you don't have to fool with that. Just paper towels will work. I've done that before too. Make sure you've got a funnel. You use one like this and just put your finger on the bottom and hold it before you put it in there. And I have used a styrofoam cup before. You just fill a small styrofoam cup and then you just pinch it and pour it over it if you, if you don't have a funnel. You can still make these even if you don't have one. All right, that's what I do to get prepped and ready. Uh, one more thing that I do before I get started on making my icing is I put about a half to a cup of powdered sugar in a sifter and I put it on a paper plate so it won't leak that way as soon as they come out and they're ready to be uh, sprinkled with powdered sugar I'm ready to go. We're going to work on our dipping icing so the first thing I'm going to do is take my cream cheese, softened cream cheese Now, if yours isn't good and softened, you can just stick it in the microwave for 10 seconds and that should help it out. Okay, I'm gonna put my teaspoon of vanilla in. about a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. Now I'm gonna use a tablespoon at a time until I get it the consistency that I want before I start adding my sugar. I'm gonna mix this up with my mixer. The next thing that I'm adding in will be one fourth a cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna blend this with my mixer really well before I add in the next sugar. After I get that blended well, I'm going to add in one fourth a cup of powdered sugar. After my powdered sugar is blended in really well, I'm going to add in one more tablespoon of heavy whipping cream for a total of two tablespoons. After that, I'm adding in two tablespoons of milk. Once this is all mixed up, I'm going to set this aside. Now once I have my icing finished, I place some in a plastic bag and I'm going to cut the tip off and drizzle it over the top. I also put some aside in a dipping uh, bowl. So that way I can dip and I can have it over the top. I'm starting out with two cups of all-purpose flour. 
two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Next, I'm using one tablespoon of cocoa powder. I need a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna whisk this together. Okay, next I've got two beaten eggs. And I have one and a half cups of milk. And I need one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to whisk this all together. Now I'm going to leave a few lumps left over in this, so make sure you're not over mixing it. I think that looks good right there. Next, I'm going to add in three teaspoons of red food coloring. You got to be careful with this. No matter how many times I use this, I always end up getting it on my fingers somewhere. Kind of like when I use crazy glue. Once I have this stirred in, I'm gonna put this in a pourable container and I'm gonna store it in my freezer for about 10 minutes while I get my heat up to 350 degrees. Now I'm using a heat thermometer. If you don't have one, just splatter some water on top and if it dances across the top, then it's ready. My heat is ready and I'm filling up my funnel. Now remember my batter has been in the freezer so it's nice and cold. Once your funnel's filled, make sure your finger's on the bottom when you're ready to start swirling, get over top of the oil, close but not too close, and just start swirling in a circular motion. Try to fill in any little holes until every bit of the batter is out of your funnel. You can use a spatula or the end of your finger just to get it down in there. I'm gonna let this cook on one side for about 45 seconds to a minute. Then I'm gonna use my egg turner, or you could use tongs to flip it over. I find the egg turner helps it stay together better. Once I flip it over, I'm gonna let that cook for the same amount on the other side. Be careful when you flip it over. Ease it over so it doesn't splash. Once it's finished cooking on the other side, I'm going to carefully lift it up with my spatula and I'm going to let it drain over top of the oil just a little bit before I put it over there on my paper towels to drain. Now I'm ready for the next one. We're going to repeat the process just like we did earlier. Pour some in our funnel. Make sure you've got the tip of your finger underneath. Now remember to get right over the oil, not too close, and then let go of your finger and swirl in a circular pattern. Be sure to fill in some little holes. Just keep swirling until all the batter is out of your funnel. Look how beautiful these are turning out. I just repeat this process until all of my batter has been used up. Now once my batter is all used up, I'm gonna place them on a plate. I like to use a double paper plate. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna serve these up. Now I'm going to dust some powdered sugar over top of each one. Now some people like their icing over the top and some people like to use it as a dipping sauce. Here is our finished red velvet funnel cake with delicious cream cheese icing. Now if you like to dip, just place yours in a bowl. But if you like your icing on top and you want to use a little plastic bag like I did, Cut my tip a little bit too big, but which that's okay. More icing for me. If you're going to put it in a bag, push it all the way down to the corner, twist it around the top, 
and then cut the tip off just a little bit in order to just swirl around the top. When you're making these, I can't stress enough two tips that are very important. Number one, make sure you put that batter in the freezer. 10 to 15 minutes, it doesn't matter. I usually put it in something that I can pour so that I can pour it into my funnel. Now for my next tip, make sure that that oil is 350 degrees. That's why I like to use a thermometer to check the oil temperature. So much easier to know exactly how much the temperature is. Now you can get these at Walmart. They're really inexpensive and they're very handy to have. All right, I had so much fun making these. They were so delicious. I hope you enjoy this recipe and that you found it helpful. If you like this recipe, leave me a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification to be notified when I have a new recipe to share. Check out some of the other recipes on my channel if you love comfort foods. Now, this is the last recipe in the series that I've been doing of fair and festival foods. I'll come back next year with this series and add some more to it, but we will continue making our delicious comfort foods. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.